Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. An after-school activities director shares his weight loss journey. Make sure that you do the best that you can and give yourself the best fighting chance to start the journey of becoming a healthier person. A blind singer dispels some common myths about what it's like to live without sight. Learn how to make beautiful prints with something found in most Hawaii backyards. Entrepreneurs on Kauai discover a healthy twist to a longtime island favorite. And speaking of favorite island treats, we'll visit the Hiki no archives for a story about a family-run business that adds technicolor to a traditional Japanese confection. And a fresh, dramatic approach to telling the story of a young woman with cerebral palsy. All on this episode of the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki no. Can do. We're here at the base of the majestic Waianae Mountains on the campus of Waianae Intermediate School in West Oahu. Waianae Intermediate School's vision is to achieve excellence in all that we do, e po'okela. Waianae Intermediate School opened in September 1966. For 30 years, our mascot was the Menehune, but in 2011, students voted to change our mascot to Junior Sea Riders. This aligned our school with White and I High School, home of the Sea Riders. The following story made by the Hikino students at White and I Intermediate School is about a staff member's weight loss journey. I know myself can I get there? That's the question. Okay. Kaipo Hanakeave is the director of all after school activities set for the students of Waianae Intermediate. Oh, nice. Nice recovery. With all the weight on his shoulders, physically and mentally, Mr. Hanakeave knew things had to change. I had liver problems, uh, my left leg has bad circulation, so it was getting swollen all the time and it was getting infected. Um, I was having, um, I had high blood pressure, a borderline diabetes, my asthma was out of control. What made me decide to lose weight was my relationship with my family and my kids and my relationship with myself. And that was the moment when I knew that I needed to do something different. But in order for him to do something different, Mr. Hanikiave had to make changes to his everyday schedule and to his body. In May of 2015, I joined a weight loss program uh, through Polymomi Hospital. And uh, in that weight loss program, you know, I did have a surgery called uh, the sleeve gastrectomy, but it assists you with losing weight. So now I work out five days a week. Um, every single morning before I come to my regular job here at Waianae Intermediate School, I go to the Croc Center and I work out for two hours every single morning, Monday through Friday. And I eat a lot less, a way, way, way lot less um, than I did before. And things definitely changed for Mr. Hani Kiave once he began his weight loss journey. Before I weighed 465 pounds and as of uh, this past Monday, I weigh uh, 305 pounds. So I've lost a total of 160 pounds. So now I'm able to do things that I weren't, wasn't able to do before. Now I can walk around and play with my kids and have fun. I know I'm on the win already. I already know how I'm gonna win. It's not an easy journey to do, but it's definitely worth it. I'm um, making the sacrifice and making the effort is definitely worth it. Um, I wouldn't trade it for the world and I wish that I did it four years ago. Mr. Hanekiave continues to encourage others in the school to be healthy and live a happier life. Make sure that you do the best that you can and give yourself the best fighting chance to start the journey of becoming a healthier person because what has done for my life has changed everything. It's changed my relationship with my kids. It's healthier and stronger. I'm able to be more a part of their life. I have the energy to invest time into them. This process and this journey has changed everything. This is Amy Nevis from Waianae Intermediate School for Hiki No. Hiki No is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hiki No Can Do. Our next story comes from students at Hongganji Mission School on Oahu, who introduce us to a highly accomplished singer-performer who just happens to be blind. Fear is all about having control. And when you're not in control of it, that's when you're afraid. Some people think that the blind live a life of fear, but for Laurie Rubin, this is not the case. 
Laurie Rubin was born with Leber's congenital amaurosis, a genetic disorder that affects the retina and causes loss of vision. People might think, oh, I'd be so terrified to take a step without being able to see, but I've never had time to think about it. It's just been my life. So it, I just kind of had this revelation that the, the fears that we do have come from, stem from that, stem from any time that we've had time to think about the unknown. Her inability to see hasn't stopped her from living an active life. Her schedule includes speaking at conferences, doing performances and singing, and being a vocal teacher. The only activity that I couldn't do, that my, my family said that I couldn't do, was ping pong. And I remember I was so mad at them. I was like, you can't tell me I can't do that. Because they had given me the self-esteem that I could do anything. So when they told me I couldn't do something, I just, I wasn't having it, you know. As a result of this self-esteem, she was able to accomplish many things. One of them being writing a memoir. So my book is called uh, Do You Dream in Color? Insights from a Girl Without Sight. And um, it's, it's really about my, it, it takes readers on a journey through my life because I realize one of the things that people want to know is they want to know how I do everyday stuff. Her book highlights her life experiences and what she went through to get to where she is now. Each chapter of her book talks about the different parts of her life and uses a different color for them. Despite her inability to see, she has interests that might surprise some people. I love making jewelry. I, I really enjoy playing around with makeup. Um, I love clothes because, you know, you can feel textures. And so, and I've always told people, I don't necessarily think that blindness is associated with vision, per se. Like, I think if you have a visual, creative mind, uh, it will manifest itself no matter whether you're blind or sighted. Laurie Rubin has taken these words to heart. As a mezzo-soprano opera singer, her list of accomplishments include working with singer-songwriter Kenny Loggins and performing at the White House. She also co-created Peace on Your Wings, a musical based on the life of Sadako Sasaki, a girl who died from leukemia as a result of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. It's really amazing to see something that when you're in your pajamas at 3 in the morning just writing something down on a computer, how that can come to life on stage and, and then more emotionally and seeing Everybody get involved, the students, the parents, the, the audience, um, other people who have investment in the story. And, and what I realized in that moment was that the reason I love this project so much more than anything else that we had done was because it was something that became a team effort. Because Laurie Rubin conquered her own fear, she inspires others to be more fearless. This is Teo Fukamizu from Hongwanji Mission School for Hikinao. Stay tuned after the show to find out what students who created this story learned from their experience. Aloha from the campus of Hana School located on the east side of Maui. Hana School originally rested on the slopes of the majestic Kawiki Hill, birthplace of Queen Ka'ahumanu, and moved to its present location just three miles north along the Hana Highway in Wakil in the early 70s. This year's graduating class of 2016 has a total of 16 students, most of whom have been together since they were three years old in preschool. The following franchise piece by the Hikino students at Hana School is on Ki Kapala, the art of stamping using the stem of the ki leaf. Ki Kapala is the art of stamping using the stem of the ki or ti leaf. The stamping technique has been used to symbolically share the kana or hidden meaning of a story. To share this art with you, we will use materials such as acrylic paint, scissors, and a brown paper bag. Before you start, you want to have an idea of the design you would like to create. First, pick some leaves from the tea leaf plant. Try to pick a variety of sizes according to the stem of the tea leaf. With a pair of scissors, cut the stem of the key leaf so it has a firm edge. Next, crumple up a piece of brown paper bag until it is soft in texture. Then uncrumple the square and flatten it. Using the scissors, cut the size of the paper you want, depending on what you are making. When you are done preparing your canvas, squirt a little paint on the scratch piece of paper for you to work on. Next. Apply the paint to the edge of the stem of the tea leaf and press firmly on the paper bag. If your edge becomes too messy, just cut the undesired part off. Be creative and use your imagination to design. 
You can use this technique to stamp on any type of material. This is Anela Lono Kaina from Hana School for Hikino. We're here on the campus of Kapa'a High School on Kauai. The school's history goes back 132 years to when it was a multi-grade school located closer to the ocean. This year we are celebrating 70 years as a high school. The school graduated its first senior class in 1946 with 66 members. We now have over 200 students graduating each year. Alumni from the original senior class will be visiting in the fall to commemorate the anniversary. The following story by the Hikino students at Kapa'a High School is about a new twist on a favorite local treat. Shave ice has been a part of Hawaii's history since the old plantation days. It was brought to the islands by the Japanese and has become a classic local treat. I remember eating shave ice when I was little. Sugary, strawberry red, making your face, lips, tongue all red. But it was great. And when it first started, I had three flavors, strawberry, banana, and vanilla. Strawberry was a favorite because that was like the only flavor. So you just grew up liking strawberry. From then, it's like about 25, 26 flavors now. And so when I first started, actually there was no, on this side of the island, nobody making shave ice. Yeah. Shave ice's popularity has grown, and with it has come new types, including a healthier, all-natural, no food coloring added version served at establishments such as Wailua Shave Ice and Kapa'a. Well, we grew up on regular shave ice, so we decided that kind of have a better product, something a little bit healthier, a little bit more tasty. The way that first came to our mind is just make everything from scratch, make everything from fresh fruit, fresh fruit juices. What made us interested in um, serving organic shaved ice was just mainly to incorporate the local fruits that were in season and of course the healthy alternative to um, the regular shave ice flavors. And then when we started trying them and sampling just you know how fresh and like delicious they came out, we were just like wow we're you know we're onto something. It's much more refined and you get natural flavors and it's even sometimes more healthy. We get our fruits, you know, mainly from the farmer's market, and then we use all organic sugars in the process of making the syrup. So it's actually a pretty natural um, way of acquiring the fruits. Our difference in price from organic and regulars is exactly double. So it's definitely, you know, it's harder. It's more labor intensive and a lot goes into it. And that's why when you come up with a good flavor, you're really proud of it. You feel it and you taste it and you feel the energy it gives you. So, you know, the proof is totally in the pudding. This is Brendan Sogner from Kapa High School for Hikino. For a look at another colorful twist on a traditional island treat, we turn to the Hikino archives for a story from Waiakea High School in Hilo. When I first started this shop, we had probably seven different kinds. However, now 20 years hence, we have probably 20 something varieties. Two Ladies Kitchen started out small, but soon things picked up and business started rolling. I believe that when you have a small business in Hilo, they're very supportive. Because uh, we were sort of hidden away and I didn't advertise, it was a word of mouth product. Right now I'm shaping um, plum flower mochi. In the middle it has koshian. Koshian is the smooth taste of the red meat. After picking up steam, the shop quickly gains loyal customers. And I love mochi, so when I heard she was open, I went. And I was so impressed. So I kept going back. I went about two or three times a month. Two Ladies Kitchen is truly a homegrown business. In the very beginning, there were only two of us who really made the mochi, my aunt and myself. We would practice in my mom's kitchen every Saturday, and she would just teach me different aspects of mochi making. Family has always been a central component of the mochi and manju shop. Uchida and her aunt, Tomi Tokeshi, are the two ladies that started the small shop over 20 years ago. Tokeshi has since retired, but Nora continues to run the business with the help of other family members. These are my parents, um, Sachi and Koshiyasu Kishimoto. And 
Sundays for day off and then every day they come here after their exercise. And that family atmosphere extends to the workers as well. We all know each other. It's like we're brothers and sisters. And um, of course, everyone loves mochi. <laughs> No, just the atmosphere that we give to the people, the greeting, you know, the smile. You just get a feeling that it's welcoming. I really like that. Fans of Two Ladies Kitchen stretch from Hilo to the neighbor islands, to the mainland and beyond. One thing's for sure, their customers know to stick to a good thing when they find it. Customers who keep coming back, they're like boyfriend and girlfriend when they first come here. Then I do their showers, their weddings, their first babies, um, you know, grandparents, celebration, their whole family. And this is what I look forward to. This is Casey Laguire from Waikia High School for Hikino. I'm here in the room of one of our digital media classes here at James Campbell High School in Eva Beach. This classroom is where our Sabre Media Club meets every week. The Sabre Media Club films ongoing events around campus and in our community. Sabre Media members have worked on a handful of professional video shoots, including an upcoming anti-bullying campaign. This club not only teaches students a good worth ethic and communication skills, but also how to deal with clients in the real world. Having our diverse group of motivated students helps us bring more awareness and acceptance for others. Recently, one of our newest members, Kayla, agreed to share a story about her struggles living with cerebral palsy in hopes to inspire others. We decided to tell her story in a dramatic and expressionistic style that is different from what you usually see on Hiki No. Cerebral palsy is the part of the brain that actually controls the muscles in your body. I was in the hospital for about six days before I gave birth to Kayla. Because she couldn't move around or she didn't crawl at nine months, she didn't take her actual first step till she was about kindergarten. Living with this condition day by day basis is hard and you have to accept the fact that you're different. You want to do all these things like sports, activities, run, jump, but you can't. I used to stay in the classroom, basically not go outside and meet friends. The teachers used to tell me, oh, you should go outside and meet new people. And it's hard because you don't want them to honestly really, really stare at you and see you different in, in society. The look on their faces would be like, okay, this child does not look normal. She looks weird. Why you walk like that? Ooh, why you dress like that? You know, why, why are you shaking? And I hated being here. I hated being the girl that has a cane, the girl that can't speak properly, the girl that can't even tell her story just because people honestly can't keep their minds to themselves. My life is honestly a roller coaster when it comes to telling my story, telling people to be confident in themselves, telling people to honestly live with what I have. And my life has been through ups and downs. She's one of the strongest little girls I've ever met. One. I haven't met anybody as strong as she is. 90% of life is just showing up. You know? And Kayla's there, man. She's gonna show up. She's gonna do what it takes. She personifies perseverance. She has challenges every day that the rest of us don't have to deal with. She's given me hope that no matter when you're born, premature or not, she's never given up. As a family, it's actually brought us together. If one falls, we all fall. If one rises, we all rise. She's my miracle, baby. <laughs>
Well, we have come to the end of this episode of Higi No. Remember, all of these stories are written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Stay tuned after the credits to find out what some students learned from working on the show. More proof that Hawaii's young people, Hiki No. Can do. Stay tuned after the credits to find out what some students learned from their Hiki No experience. They had um, this energy, and I think they, they had no fear. They said, okay, we'll do it. Hey, why not? In our story about the blind singer, I did part camera, I wrote some of the script, and I edited. I did a lot of the camera work uh, for a lot of it, but I, most of it was just the editing. This year, my students for Hikino were all sixth graders and um, it was a bit of a contrast from uh, previous, the previous year where I worked with eighth graders. Um, I, it was, I started from kind of like zero. They did not have any experience. We kind of knew our capabilities and uh, we all got along. At some point we were kind of playful and stuff like that, but it, it ended up like we all were serious about it. We all knew exactly what we were supposed to do. There were some challenges uh, just in terms of, you know, the sixth graders were a little bit more playful. Um, however, at the same time, they had a, a, this energy, and I think they had no fear. They said, okay, we'll do it. Hey, why not? I think the interview turned out pretty good. The hardest part of it was picking out the best things that she said, because she said a lot. Yeah. People might think, oh, I'd be so terrified to take a step without being able to see. How we got the story from our interview was we picked out a bunch of clips. We printed them, we cut them out. Then we chose the ones that we thought fit the most and that made the most sense. We kept on mixing them in an order until we thought it was good. And we had to change it a few times, but then we finally got it. I'm really happy, I'm really relieved that we did well. Well, when you guys finally say it's done, we're like, yes, yes. It's a really nice thing that we we just, we worked really hard and now it's finally paid off and it's really satisfying. It teaches me um, that um, my students can do quite a lot. Um, and I don't necessarily have to always tell them what to do. I can take a step back and then let them take ownership and see what they do. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.